Okay, welcome to the first um, tutorial that we're going to be doing on the basics of chemistry. So we're hoping hoping to develop a collection of videos to help you understand the basics of chemistry. Um, but this is a an introduction video to some of the very most basic um, concepts that you're likely to encounter at GCSE Science. So. First of all, we're going to start off by looking at this, the periodic table of elements. This is um, a very big deal in chemistry because this is what forms the building blocks of absolutely everything in the universe. So everything from organisms to planets to stars, everything is made up of these elements. Everything that you can think of, everything you can imagine is made up of these uh, very specific elements. Uh, now, you can notice on here that there's lots of different pretty colours. We've got our purples and our blues and things like that. Now, those are just to help us a little bit in terms of breaking up the periodic table into its key components and some of its key properties. But the first thing we're going to do is um, we don't actually need to know anything about this series of uh, elements down here called the lanthanides and actinides. So we're going to get rid of that just so it's not even on our radar. Okay, so um, the first thing that we need to know when understanding the periodic table, so the names are all done in color coding, just for you to be aware. Um, but the thing, the first thing that you need to be aware of are these numbers here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now those things which go down are called the groups. So the groups go down. So we've got group one, group two, etc. There. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing is you will have noticed these numbers here going one, two, three, four, five, six, and those numbers that go across are called the periods, the periods. So if, for example, I said to you, uh, what element is in group five, period three, you'd find group five, period three, one, two, three, so that would be phosphorus. If I said uh, group uh, two, period four, group two, period four, that's calcium. Now, the group numbers and the period numbers actually tell us something very useful, um, which will come into play a little bit later on. So the group numbers tell us um, how many uh, electrons are in the outer shell? In the outer... Ooh, what's going on here? Um, so how many electrons are in the outer shell? Uh, that's the, also known as the valence shell. Okay, so how many electrons are in the outer shell? So for example, um, beryllium, because it's in group 2, has got two electrons in its outer shell. Um, uh, sulfur, because it's in group 6, it's got 6 electrons in its outer shell. It's quite nifty. The periods actually also tell us how many shells there are. So, for example, um, lithium is in, group, is in period 2, and so it's got 2 shells. Um, uh, bromine is in period 4, and so it's got 4 shells. The outer one of which obviously has got seven electrons. So those numbers tell us those tell us a little bit more than just where they are. They tell us a little bit about the structures, but we'll come to the structure of the atom a little bit later. Okay, so let's have a little look at some of these colors and what these colors are from different colors tell us. So first of all, we need to know that groups uh, one and two are known as the alkali metals. The alkali metals. Uh, well, the reason for that is because when they react with water, they produce alkali solutions. Okay, but uh, they're a very, very reactive group of elements, uh, and we'll find out a little bit later on in the course as to why that is. Uh, the next section we're going to look at are, is here, this big blue rectangle, and these are called the transition metals. The transition metals. These include things like iron, um, copper. Um, platinum, uh, zirconium, things like that. So those blue ones are our transition metals. So this rectangle, all those are transition metals. Now we'll come back to these ones in a second, these oranges, greens, and blues. Let's have a look for a second though at the yellows over here. Now the yellow group here are called the halogens. Now the halogens have got very special sets of properties um, related to their structure, and that's why they're grouped together. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, they react in very similar ways. Uh, they're called the halogens. We'll come back to what those are in a minute. Uh, over here we have group 8, also known as group 0, um, and these are called the noble gases. The noble gases. Uh, now one of the reasons for that is because they're very snooty, they're very posh gases, and they, they, they are full outer shells, and they don't want to react with anything else, and so they, they like to keep themselves to themselves, a bit snooty. Now as you can see here with our oranges, we've got a stepladder that comes down here. 
Ooh. That's a step ladder. Pretty horrendous step ladder. Um, and that tells us uh, something very important as well. So everything to the to the left of that is a metal. So everything on that side of the periodic table is a metal. Everything on this side of the periodic table, surprise, surprise, is a non-metal. A non-metal. Um, these green ones, however, are a little bit weird. A little bit weird. So the green ones, these ones here, are called the metalloids. Metalloids, because they have some properties of metals and some properties of non-metals. So, for example, um, silicon is uh, technically a non-metal, but it uh, is good at conducting electricity, which is why it's used in microchips, often used in computers and phones and things like that. So, silicon is very useful. So, these metalloids have got some unique features that you need to be aware of. And we'll come back to it at a later point. Uh, then we've also got carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, sulfur, selenium. So these ones are uh, very definitely non-metals, but they don't necessarily fall into one of these nice groups here. Um, so that's more or less the outline of the periodic table. Now, you may be wondering why hydrogen is over here and why it's in blue uh, and why is it in group one. So if it's in blue, why is it over there? Now, even though hydrogen is not a metal, it does have one outer electron in its outer shell, which is why it's in group one. So that's the reason it's over there. Okay, so that's more or less the basics of the periodic table then. So you do need to be aware of these different names, you know, so the alkali metals, halogens, noble gases, transition metals, metalloids. You do need to know the names of those groups and where they are. Okay, so let's have a look for a second then at one of these uh, elements. Okay, so one of these that will take one in particular and actually two we're going to look at, and look at what some of these numbers and letters and things mean. So we're just going to scroll down, we're going to skim past this for a minute, we'll come back to that. Uh, okay, so here we have got uh, two elements, and we've got helium here, and we've got potassium here. Now you can see that we've got some different numbers here. We've got a two there, and a four, forget about these, forget about these numbers, the decimal numbers here, just take that as a four, uh, forget about these decimal numbers here, just take that as 39. Okay, so we've got a 2 and a 4 and a 19 and 39. Now, the bigger of those numbers tells us the mass number. This is the mass number. Now, depending on which periodic table you're looking at, sometimes uh, these might be the opposite way round, um, but you just always need to know that the bigger number is always the mass number. Bigger number. Um, this other number here is called the atomic number. Or the also known as the proton number. So the proton number tells us how many protons are in the nucleus, and this number tells us something a little bit different. Let's have a look at a structure of a typical atom then for this. So, ooh, up we go. Right. So uh, this is what a typical atom looks like then. So we've got this section here in the middle, which is called the nucleus. Make, make sure you're aware of how that's spelled. I don't know why, but people always spell that with a U in a funny place. Uh, and this is made up of protons in the green and neutrons in the red. So um, uh, we need to know uh, the charges of those things. So protons are positively charged, pro, okay, so protons are positively charged. Neutrons are neutral, actually, they have ne no charge. So the clue is in the name, neutral, neutron. And electrons, which are these things buzzing around the outside in, the, uh, in these shells or orbitals, that's what these are called, shells. And orbitals. Um, that's, this is where electrons live. Okay, so they live in the outside and they, they orbit it, they go around the outside of it. Now remember, the outer shell is called the valence shell. Okay, so this one uh, has got one, two, three electrons, and one of those electrons in its, is in its valence shell. So let's have a look at um, what that means. So uh, this number here, the mass number, then that tells us, the mass number tells us how many protons and neutrons are in the middle here. Okay, so what's in the nucleus? It's basically telling us what's in the nucleus, nothing else. Now, electrons have such a tiny, tiny mass, they don't really count as having any mass at all, so they don't really bear, have any bearing on this. So the nucleus, uh, the weight of the nucleus, that's the mass number. The atomic number, the proton number, only tells us how many protons there are. So this one, for example, would have, an, uh, would have uh, a mass number of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
uh, but it would have a proton number of one, two, three, because there's only three protons in there. It's very important we know the difference between that. So, uh, let's interpret some of these numbers then. So, having a look at these numbers here, let's stick with potassium for a minute then. Um, so, it's got a mass number of 39, and it's got a, uh, uh, a proton number of 19. So, that must mean it's got 19 protons. Now, if it's got 19 protons, it must also have 19 electrons. We'll come to why in a second. Um, now, the mass number obviously contains how many neutrons and protons there are. So if this is 39 protons and neutrons, and there are 19 of those are, are protons, then I'm saying the, remainder, the remaining number are, is 20. So there must be 20 neutrons in there. Now, I just said this is very important, the protons and neutrons, so protons and electrons numbers being the same. And it is, because um, a neutral atom, because this is a neutral atom, um, always has the same number of protons and electrons. So here we've got one, two, three protons, one, two, three electrons. Uh, and there is a very good reason for that. So if I can just pull this over here. Okay, so um, this here, this di oh, this diagram here shows us, oh no. Okay, so this diagram here shows us um, that if you have one electron, one proton, and one electron, the charges balance each other out. Okay, so remember, this uh, proton is uh, positively charged, and electron is negatively charged. So uh, they balance each other out. Now, if you were to change the number of protons and electrons present, like we've done here. Okay, so here we're saying that we've got more uh, electrons than protons. Now, if that's true, if you were to have only one proton and two electrons then it would change the charge of it uh, and would give the, the atom an overall negative charge. Now this sort of thing is an ion and we'll come back to that a little bit later. So ions are charged particles. Charged particles. Uh, so that is uh, the basic structure of the atom and a little bit about why, how we can work out the number of electrons, protons and neutrons. Okay, so uh, let's go back to this example very quickly then. So uh, if we just have a look at this remaining one, so we've got helium here. So uh, the proton number, that must mean there's two protons. If there are two protons in a neutral atom, that must mean there are two electrons. And uh, mass number of four, so there are four things in the nucleus, two of them are protons, so the remaining two must be neutrons. That's how we can work that out. Um, right, and I'll just show you very quickly what uh, helium and potassium sort of look like. So this is what um, helium looks like. So we've got in here in the nucleus we've got two protons, two neutrons, and two electrons in the orbital outside. So that is what helium looks like. And this is what potassium looks like. So potassium has got, uh, I don't even bother to put in all the protons and neutrons because that would take too long, but we can see we've got um, one, two, three, four shells. So remember that must tell me that's in the potassium is in um, the period four. And it's got uh, two electrons in the inner shell, eight in the next, eight in the next, and one in the outer shell. So remember it's got one electron in the outer shell, that tells me it's in group one. So it's in period four, group one. Now if you look at these relative sizes of helium and potassium, you can tell that helium is much smaller than potassium. It's very, it's, it's, it's you know, very light and very tiny compared to potassium. So in comparison, in terms of mass, in terms of weight, uh, this one's very light compared to potassium. And we know that, we can, we can compare that to the mass numbers. So if this has a big mass number of 39, it's heavy, and this one's got four, so um, much smaller mass number. So that more or less sums up um, the basic idea of uh, foundations of chemistry. So you need to know about the structure of the atom, so how the atom is structured, uh, protons, electrons, neutrons, all that sort of stuff, uh, charges and things, and of course our uh, holy grail of, uh, of helpful things in science, which is the periodic table of elements, and you know all these groups and things. So I hope you found the tutorial useful, uh, keep uh, checking out for any new things which are being posted up, and uh, good luck with um, your revision.